ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? The show starts in three, two, one, go. Good morning, Kane Sport. It's October 27th, 2021. I'm Gary Furman, the publisher of Kanesport.com. Joined, as always, by our managing editor, Matt Shodell, as we discuss the news of the day. And, uh, Matt, we got a lot to talk about today. We, we, we've been busy. Uh, we had basketball media day. Uh, we're, we were at a football practice. Uh, stories on, in both regards. Uh, we've got our Tyreek Stevenson blog today. So an awful lot to talk about. So let me uh, get right to it. And um, I'll start with the Tyreek blog. And uh, I don't know if everybody's noticed, but Tyreek's been playing some pretty damn good football lately. He's uh, playing very physical, um, packing wood out there on the football field, big hits. And he's been covering phenomenally. Uh, And the thing that struck, I think, both of us, Matt, on Saturday in watching Tyreek was it was a really good matchup for him because NC State had some bigger receivers that he was matched up against. And that's where uh, Tyreek thrives. Uh, where he struggles sometimes is when he's got to cover the little shifty guys that maybe are a little quicker than him and um, chase them all over the field. In this case, he had bigger receivers to cover all night, and I thought did a really nice job. And um, so, uh, you know, th- the interesting thing for Tyreek, Matt, is as these weeks go by, and we talked to him a little bit about that, and, you know, you'll see some of his responses in the blog when you look at it today, but he's got a tough decision to make coming up. He could come back next year and play another year and keep working and getting better. This really is his first full season playing outside cornerback. Uh, so he can come back next year, keep progressing, whether it's under this coaching staff or a new coaching staff, uh, and then go to the NFL a year from now, as opposed to maybe forcing it just a bit right right now. Matt, uh, what are your thoughts on Tyreek's future? Um, well, yeah, first of all, I agree with you. I mean, he's he started off the year very shaky, and he's playing better and better. You know, we talk about players that are not improving or getting worse from last year. Like, he's been getting better every week, which is what you should see and what you want to see. And kudos to him. Kudos to the coaches on this one, right? Because it takes coaching also. Um, you know, he was used mainly in the box as a tackler at George. This is really his first chance since high school to cover guys. And he's getting acclimated, you know. Um, they're also doing a good job finding those matchups where he's not on those quick, fast guys we can't cover. So that's good. All right, but the bottom line is this. He's got a decision to make um, at the end of this year. I mean, you know, and and I get the impression that he's seriously thinking about coming back. He probably does need to come back, but it is a decision for him. He shouldn't leave. He should definitely not leave. He needs to come back. Um, he's not, a, you know, I don't think he's a day one guy right now. You know, maybe he could become one. But again, you don't know these people's family situations. You know, they... A lot of them just want to get in the pros, start making money for their families. Um, You know, they're sold on this fact that, you know, after the first contract, they make the real money anyway. What's the point of staying if you're not going to be a first rounder anyway? You know, um, unfortunately. for I I think that would have been his blueprint. But they They just need him back. They They really do. And he needs to come back. He's only got this is his one season of putting tape up that shows how he performs on the outside as a corner. And I think he's going to need a little more than that. So, um, you know, I, I think it's going to be an interesting decision that he has well, to make. Listen, yeah, listen, I mean, the reason why he might leave is because there, there's a shortage in the NFL of these physical cornerbacks who can play against these physical receivers, you know. There's a lot of fast, quick, twitchy cornerbacks out there. There's not a lot of guys like Tyreek out there right now. So he might think there's a, you know, there's a niche for him somewhere where he can fill – you know, where there's going to be a few teams out there that say, we need a guy like that. We have nobody on the roster that's like that. And he can really, in a couple of years of development, be an outstanding physical cornerback. Um, there's not a lot of physical cornerbacks in the league right now. So he might see that and see that, that as an opportunity. If the, if the wrong slash right agent gets in his ear, he's gone. <laughs> yeah, isn't that always the case? Uh, we've seen so many kids make bad decisions because of bad advice they get. And uh, I hope Tyreek gets good advice. Uh you know, my instinct, like I said, is I think he does need to come back next year. But we'll see how he does the next, you know, five games. And and maybe that uh, alters things a little bit. All right, another guy, Matt, that to me really has been one of my surprises uh, this year 
who I think covered very, very well on Saturday night was Marcus Clark, a young cornerback starting for the first time. He didn't stand out on the field in a negative way. And to me, that's a huge deal for a young kid starting for the first time. Um, we had a chance to talk to him. Very confident kid. Um, very focused kid. Um, I've been impressed with Marcus Clark, Matt. Look, a cornerback is like an offensive lineman. If you don't notice them, it means they did well. I did not notice Marcus Clark on Saturday. Yeah. He started and played a bunch of reps. That means he did a good job, you know. So, yeah, and it's, it's a one-game sample size, too. It can come yeah. and go. Yeah, but look, I mean, that look, that, that was a good passing offense. He held his own for sure. And, like, super, super happy for him. Such a nice kid, you know, a young kid, bright future. Um, I'm glad the coaches gave him the chance. Now, I'm not sure he got the chance only but He got the chance only because to Corey Couch was seriously ill. Um, okay. Going around the team. I don't think he beat out to Corey Couch. So we'll see this weekend if, based on that last week performance, maybe now he has beaten out to Corey Couch. You know, maybe this showed coaches, hey – you know, he's the, he's the top boundary corner, and Takori can be, in, you know, in nickel, and I don't know. We'll see what happens. Now, they probably need everybody this weekend because Pittsburgh will wear them out. You know, Pittsburgh with his Kenny Pickett at quarterback is going to throw the ball a lot this this weekend, and, uh, you know, Pitt will wear them out. It'll be interesting to see how the DBs hold up. you got a young secondary now uh, that's going to be out there. And, 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 and you, know, Whip, you know, we know Coach Whipple very well. He's circling. He's circling guys like, how can I exploit that guy? How can I exploit that guy? Funny thing is somebody on our message board today posted that they think Pitt is going to throw the game Saturday because Pat Narduzzi likes Manny, and he figures that if he throws the game, that Manny might keep his yeah. job. Like, yeah, no. The, yeah, the theory, what, the theory is that Pitt wants Miami to be awful for the next two or three years? I, I don't understand. Yeah, no, I, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean that's pure time. comedy, okay? Like, yeah. Like, you know. I'm guessing it was yeah. a joke. Yeah, it was, it's pure comedy. All right, um, we also have more coverage um, looking towards the Pitt game this weekend. Um, a lot of Pitt team talk uh, we've been getting from up there. Um, they got a great sports information up there, up there, director up there, Ernie Borghetti, and he he does a great job of, of getting us all the information that's going on up there, uh, unlike any other opposing team that I could think of that Miami plays. And uh, so we're, you know, we're getting a ton of stuff in. And uh, we're putting it out on the website for you guys so you can see what pit players are saying about Miami uh, so far this week. We also talked to TVD. We're going to give him that moniker, TVD, Tyler Van Dyke, in case you don't know who I'm talking about, but I'm sure you do by now. And um, pretty funny, just absolutely hysterical um, interview session we had with him yesterday. Uh, basically, Manny Diaz told him before he, before he came to talk to us that you know, Tyler, how about skipping the predictions this week? You know, it was kind of cute last week, but, you know, maybe it would be a good idea uh, not to do that this week. And, you, know, uh, Manny, you know what Manny forgot to tell him? Don't tell them that I told you that. Correct. You forgot to tell them. <laughs> it's good. Next week, next week will be, listen, yeah. blah, 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 and don't tell them I just told you that. Every week he's got to tell Tyler the specific exact thing that he shouldn't have said the week before. It's pure comedy. I love Tyler. He's, yeah, he's great. He's great. Yeah, it's uh, pure comedy. Um, big challenge for Tyler this week. Uh, he did great against NC State. Now he's got to try to string back-to-back -back outings together. And for a young quarterback, that's nothing to take for granted. Uh, I'm going to be very interested to see what Tyler Van Dyke looks like out there on Saturday. Um, because another topic that is coming up, which is absolutely applicable, is – where does Jake Garcia fit in the future in all of this? And, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about it yesterday, I think. And, you know, do, do you just anoint Tyler Van Dyke off of the NC State performance as the quarterback of the future for the Miami Hurricanes? I don't think so. I, I think you've got to let Jake Garcia be seen and heard in this battle going into next year where one of them almost certainly is going to be the starter. But I also wouldn't be shocked, uh, and I'll throw this one out there as well, uh, depending on who's coaching this team next year and what's going on, I wouldn't be stunned if they go in the transfer portal and get a more experienced guy to have on the team to go with these two young kids next year. I, I wouldn't assume anything just because Tyler Van Dyke had a good game against NC State on Saturday night. Uh, what, you know, let me answer your question, okay? When you go in the transfer portal to grab a guy, that's a guy who wants to come in and play right away where it's not going to be a situation where 
man, I don't really time. matter. I may not be the top dog coming in, but I'll win the job. No, like no transfer quarterback who's a top quarterback is going to come here with these two young guys who, and one of them who looks amazing. You would have said the same thing about Charleston Rambo. Well, why is Charleston oh, Rambo yeah, going to come here? They got 12 receivers on the roster, Matt. Why would Charleston Rambo come here? He came here because he's better than them. He went into Mark Popper awful. Uh, I understand, that? but they were here. He wasn't scared off by the competition. If you, if you're a great, great, offense, a great huh? offensive system for him and a great quarterback who recruited him and, and the assurance that he would be starting. Uh, what are you talking about? With he didn't the come in with no assurance that, hey, you're going to start off behind these three returning starters, but you, you have a chance. No, they told him you're going to start. These two guys suck. And when De'Ara King came here, Nikosi Perry and Jaron Williams were here. He's better than them. Who are you talking about? came here. De'Ara King. De'Ara King came. Those two guys were already on the outs by that time when he no. came. Wow. Nikosi Perry played last year. Nikosi Perry. Was he wasn't. De'Ara King wasn't saying, oh, geez, I'm petrified. Nikosi Perry is at Miami. I can't go to Miami. First of all, you have to he remember, was, a new coordinator came in. He didn't want Correct. To That's what I'm talking about. What if there's a new coordinator? What if there's a new head coach? If that what new if coordinator takes a transfer, that means that guy's starting, and then Jake and TVD say, bye bye Miami. There's no chance. That's not I, think chance. I think there's a chance. I think there's a chance that they might bring in a veteran quarterback morning, to compete with these guys. Transport ratings is not Listen, happening. You know, if things change around here, get ready for a whole new ball game because – you know, nobody's like you're not coaching here to go. Oh, geez, let me be nice to Tyler Van Dyke and let's go eight and four or seven and five again in 2022. I mean, I'm asking the question, and we don't have the answer to this yet. I'm not suggesting we do, but if I'm coming into this program, I'm whether I'm a coordinator or a head coach, I'm saying, does the quarterbacks that I have there give me a chance to win every football game? Do and you if agree? The answer, do you agree? That if that happens and the new coach says, these aren't my guys, I'm taking a transfer quarterback, do you agree? TBD and Jake Garcia say bye-bye? Because I think they do. I think at least one of them might, yeah. So that's crazy to do that. But, but well, it's it's not crazy if you think you need to be better than them. And we don't know the answer yet. We don't know how good TVD is. When, you know, I'm not – you know, anybody that sits there and goes crazy and starts so reacting – quarterback's not going to be a top game? quarterback in the country. It's not going to be a top quarterback. It's a guy who wants to leave because he's already a backup somewhere else. Let me ask you a question. Do you think you really know whether to whether Tyler Van Dyke is going to be a franchise quarterback Absolutely in Miami? Not. We Absolutely. have no clue. Is, no what's clue. The, what's right. the transfer usually? Charleston Rambo was not being used correctly in that offense. He had a horrible year, so he came here. Derek King was in a, a mid-level program, so he came here. Jalen Phillips could not get on the field and had injury problems that didn't deal with correctly, so he came here. There's always baggage with these guys, even ones that, that are hit that are hit. Not always, Matt. Look at Justin Fields. He left Georgia, went to Ohio right. State. Why? Because he was going to he had to he was going to be a backup if I remember correctly. No, he felt he made a mistake. He well, you know, yeah, things weren't going perfectly for him at Georgia. He probably could have stayed there and become their quarterback. I mean, look, you can hit, you can hit on a guy. You but it's always for a reason. It's never the guys in a great offense where he's a starter. And he says, "Hey, I'm going to try Miami." It, it's not just that doesn't happen. When Jalen Hurts went from Alabama to Oklahoma, do you think Oklahoma had quarterbacks on their roster? But Lincoln Riley didn't think they were ready to play, so he brought right. Jalen Hurts in for a year. I mean, it happens all the time. I mean, you get it depends who's available, who's in the portal, who the coaches are, and how they evaluate these guys. And uh, my my point in all this is that very exciting the way Tyler played Saturday night. I thought he was great. Made three or four absolutely NFL throws down the field deep. Uh, you know, had command of everything. Miami won by one point. Okay, so like I'm not ready to anoint anything in either direction. Uh, I think everything is an open option for Miami football moving forward, uh, whether Manny Diaz survives or doesn't survive. Uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, they, they didn't hesitate, like I said, to bring Rambo in this year. Uh, they're, they're always looking. They brought DeAndre Johnson in this year, even though they had Jafari Harvey uh, coming back and they had Zach McLeod out there and, uh, you know, Chance Williams coming up. They still thought that, listen, we need another defensive end to play. DeAndre Johnson hasn't turned out to be their best defensive end this year. So the transfer portal is a game changer. It gives coaches the opportunity always to be reaching for more, reaching for more. With Miami's roster where it is now, they have to always be reaching for well, more. Look, okay, so if a new coach comes, Ja'Kurri Brown backs out of the commitment, I agree they have to take another quarterback in the portal. But I don't think they're going to get a guy who's going to be a day one starter. It'll be like what they did with Cody Brown, a guy who's probably a second-year guy somewhere else. 
come in, you know, just maybe compete down the road or first year guy, whatever, you know, like a like an, an active freshman. But um, you know, if if Jacuri is still coming to Miami, you know, I think three quarterbacks on the roster who are all really good that are all young. I just don't see how you take a transfer at that point. But you know, we'll maybe see. You're right. Maybe you're we'll right. see. I think a lot will depend what Tyler puts on film the rest of the year. It'll also depend on if we see anything of Jake Garcia. Uh, if Jake Garcia remains a total mystery and all you have is Tyler Van Dyke of any substance to wrap your hands around because your Curry Brown won't have done anything and you're looking to win. Y- yeah. You might look in the portal. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. Uh, also story on Will Mallory today. And um, this one's interesting because Will's been going through a tough time. Uh, this is a guy that came into the season thinking I'm going to have a huge year. I, I you know, uh, Brevin Jordan's out of the picture. Uh, Will's thinking I'm going to be the man this year. This is, you know, th- th- this is my time. Uh, this is why I came to tight end you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, it hadn't been working out that way. And uh, it's been tough on him mentally, way more than he, he probably lets on publicly and when he, ta- when he talks to us. Like, you know, I know for a fact multiple players have had private talks with him, trying to cheer him up. You know, keep his spirits good. Um, you know, your moment's going to come, Will. Hang in there. And it did on Saturday night against NC State. He got opportunities. He made the most of them. He, he scored a touchdown and made probably the biggest catch of the season in that catch over the middle that gave Miami a first down that iced the game because uh, they didn't have to give the ball back uh, to NC State again. So i um, very happy for Will Mallory. Uh, his It was a good bounce back game for him. Let's hope he can... Uh, build on that as the season goes on. Um, I mentioned earlier, we were at a basketball media day yesterday and uh, very interesting. You know, I twice gave Jim Laranega the opportunity to pound his chest about his team. Um, and he wants to, he likes this team, but he's also being a little careful about it as well. Like he doesn't want to oversell. They are short of big. I mean, they're, they're not big. And, you know, Rodney Miller walks in the room. He's almost unrecognizable. Now, remember, Rodney Miller is a center that was overweight, okay, as a freshman. You should see this kid. He's a string bean now. It is the most unbelievable transformation. It's taken five years. It happened by accident. Um, Rodney Miller looks amazing. Like, he's in incredible shape. He's, he, he's skinny as hell, um, but he's still coming off uh, ankle surgery, and I mean, ankle injury and things like that. And, um, you know, we'll see how he performs when the games start. They need Rodney Miller this year, Matt. They have a ton of good guards, a ton of good forwards. Larry Nagan knows it. He knows they have a chance to be a sleeper team in the ACC this year. Folks, this is going to be an exciting team. I encourage everybody, get behind Miami basketball this year. Phil, the Bank United Center, uh, this is a team that's going to be worth watching. Okay, They are, they are going to be very entertaining very exciting. They got wings galore. They got guys that can score, get up and down the court. They're going to press a lot more on defense. The one thing they're lacking is a bruising rebounder and defender inside. If they can figure out a way to defend people in the paint, then you know, then they're going to be a real dangerous team. We'll see what happens. But Matt, I, I walked out of media day with a really good feeling about Miami basketball, and I don't think you know we could have said the same thing at the end of last season when they had seven players their best players transferring out, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, no, but I mean, at the beginning of last year, I thought they were going to be really good too. And the year before, I thought they were going to be really good. So, I mean, look, they're getting picked like ACC media picked them 12th. SI picked them 8th in the ACC. Um, I think they're more like the 8th and the 12th. You know, I saw another ranking of 10th in the ACC. But, like, no one's really picking them as the top four or top six in the ACC. I know that for, for us, the team looks really good. The problem is the rest of the ACC also is really good. So, like... You know, 500 in the ACC, maybe, you know, what is it, 18 games, 10 and 8, whatever it is. I don't remember how many games they play in the ACC. You know, but I could see them being a little above 500 in the ACC. I don't think they're going to dominate the ACC, but they will be exciting to watch. I agree with that, 100%. Well, they're going to need Rodney and Dengak and uh, Sam Wardenberg to rebound the ball and, and, and be an interior presence on defense. If they get that, I think they'll be really good. Um, I have a lot of faith in this coaching staff uh, just because of their track record that – if they have the, the athletes, they'll, they'll game plan very well. They're, they're, it's a very good game planning coaching staff. And um, I'm excited for Miami basketball. I like the kids, the nicest kids in the world. Uh, very impressed by everything I saw at Media Day. Uh, 
And um, I got a kick out of Laranega. Twice I baited him to to start pounding his chest a little bit about the team, <laughs> and he didn't really didn't really bite. You know, he, he he likes the team, but he's you know staying a little reserved about it. He doesn't want to start tooting his horn uh, so quickly. And um, you know, Matt, obviously age is an issue for Coach L. I don't see a guy that's showing any inclination that he's going to follow Shashevsky and Roy Williams into retirement anytime soon. Um, I don't think that's what he wants either. And, and you know, I think you got to give him a ton of credit for the way he rebuilt this roster. I mean, they he only had seven players for most of last year. Now they have fourteen. They can actually practice every day. And um, yeah, I'm um, I'm 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 really bullish about about Miami basketball. Yeah, I'm 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 I'm, I'm I'm wearing my cane shades for Miami basketball for this year. Although, wait a minute, what the heck? I can't, I can't wear the. I got to find different cane shades because I, I mean, you can't wear a face mask for for basketball for sure. But uh, but no, I'm I'm feeling uh, very bullish on on Miami basketball for sure. All right, and we also have a recruiting story for you today, Matt. This kid, Tyler Aronson, four star quarterback from Palm Beach Gardens. This kid's almost recruiting Miami as opposed to vice versa. Um, Always very complimentary of Miami. Always, um, no matter what, win or lose, um, is very clear that he's very interested in Miami. Always says Miami is right at the top of his recruitment. Um, obviously, he's 2024. We're a long way from recruiting a 2024 quarterback right now. Um, but, and there's other good ones that he's going to have to be evaluated against also. Um, the kid at Miami Pace for starters. But um, Tyler Aronson right now showing every sign that he would like to be a Miami Hurricane. I mean, yeah, but he went, you know, well, he went to the game because he's friends with the family of the NC State player. He's been to the App State game, obviously. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's just so early. You know, who knows what happens with Miami's coaching situation. But, yeah, I mean, certainly he likes Miami. You know, he's got, I think, six offers. Miami's one of them. Um, it's good that Miami's offering these kids early. You know, I really like that, regardless who the coaching staff is, what the coaching staff is. I, I you know, I do like giving out those super early offers. The kids remember that. Um and, you know, he's a really good player, so we'll see what happens. All right, well, that's going to do it for today for Good Morning Kane Sport. A uh, couple program notes. Um, we've got the Lamar Thomas Show tonight at 8. If you missed uh, Kane Sport Live last night, the podcast is also available on the website. Um, some of the guests on the Lamar Show, Bernard Tiger Clark, Father Leo, those of you old school Kane fans will certainly remember who Father Leo is. That's going to be i'm sure an amazing part of the show uh tomorrow night and um also uh, former quarterback kenny kelly will be joining us and uh could be more as well so um lamar thomas show tonight at eight encourage everybody to tune in for that we'll be back at you tomorrow morning with another good morning cane sports so for matt shodell i'm gary Furman. everybody have a great great day and we'll see you next time everybody